in a few moments, we're going to have the opportunity to participate with our new pastor in officially installing him here this morning as pastor. And I guess it, it's already official. I mean, we know that. But we have a, a chance to come together and participate together in this moment where we become pastor and people. And uh, it's important not just for him and his family, but for us as well. And so we have our superintendent here this morning with us to help us do that. I think we are, maybe we could call him a, a regular attender by now. <laughs> <laughs> because we've been able to have him with us several times and we're, we're glad for that. And we're glad he's here with us this morning. So will you follow his direction and be alert to the part that belongs to us as well this morning as he leads us through this installation of our pastor. Dr. Wilson, we're glad to have you here. Thank you so much. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. And uh, as Joan and I were driving up, uh, I said, I, I think this is like three times in three months when I've been to Avon Park. And it's good. I like it. I like it. I don't know if the other churches are going to let me keep doing this, but uh, I've got 106 other churches that need a visit. Well, but not 106 that needed a pastor. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, it, is, it is such a privilege to be here on your new pastor's first Sunday and to officially install him calendar doesn't always work out that way and sometimes I come three or four weeks after a pastor has begun and so uh, this is kind of special for me to actually be here on your first Sunday pastor I want to I want to thank a couple of people before we begin because what we're going to do here in just a moment is is kind of like a wedding ceremony where uh, we exchange vows uh, so uh, your pastor will make some promises to you, a covenant with you, and you will be making a covenant with him. And, uh, and we are all witnesses to that, and at the end, I'll make an official pronouncement. Uh, and we're recording it. So uh, if you ever forget what you said to one another, we have it on record. But uh, I want to thank I want to thank a couple of people. Uh, first of all, I think we need to thank Brother Daryl for yeah. his uh, service to us. <laughs> and he's not going anywhere. His role just changes a little bit, and uh, we're so very grateful for the additional yeah. responsibilities that he has uh, taken on during this time. And uh, I can just sense his spirit every time I'm here. Amen. Uh, what a gentle servant's heart he has, and he has ministered to you, and uh, you have shown your appreciation to him. Keep doing that, all right? Uh, that's good for, for the relationships that we have in the body of Christ, and we are deeply grateful. Thank you, Brother Darrell, for your leadership. And I see on the back row, yeah. I don't normally see a, somebody like this on the back row, but Dr. LeBron Fairbanks and Ann are here. Would you stand? You also served us. Thank you. God bless you. So glad you're here this morning as well. Uh, seated next to them are some friends of mine, and I'm going to forget somebody, so I'm going to stop with uh, Dave and Brooksy, okay? And uh, uh, good friends of ours. Brooksy, I noticed... You were struggling to see where the offering box was when they were announcing it. I had an issue with that the first time I was here too. It's actually not a box in the middle, it's, it's a slot on the side. So uh, I'm gonna be watching, okay? Make sure you have it you leave. And uh, Brother Deist, before we start this, I think you have some people you would like to sure. recognize in your family, uh, sister, Sister Deese, I know, but there are others seated with her that I, I don't. Yes, we are delighted today, quite a surprise, to have my dear mother oh. here with us. Oh. Wait a minute. Yes. Nancy. And my two brothers, Ron and Tim, are here today. I'm the, yeah, go ahead. I'm the middle child, and I'm mom's favorite, in case they need to know that today. And uh, my sister-in-law, Rose, is here with us as well, Ronnie's wife. And, yes. 
And um, my daughter, Caitlin, our baby daughter, Caitlin, is here. And of course, my dear wife, Kendra. And uh, so we're all going to have them here. Thank you. And Kendra, just so we know, I need you to stand so everybody knows this is the pastor's wife, okay? <laughs> Joan and I had a, had a delightful visit with Pastor and, and Kendra a few weeks ago and just fell in love with them. What a wonderful couple you have as your pastor. And uh, I told Kendra, and I tell this to every spouse of a pastor, uh, my expectation, and I want you to hear it from me as well, my expectation of the spouse of a pastor is the same expectation I have of any lay person in the church. Uh, Kendra has her own gift set and her own calling. Uh, she is a professional and she has a full-time uh, job and uh, we expect you to carry that out as God has equipped you and enabled you and called you to do. And we would expect that you would use your gifts in the local church like anyone else. As you find a place of meaningful service here that you would exercise those, those gifts. But there's no more expectation placed on you than on anybody else That's in right. this congregation. And uh, I want you to hear that from me, and I want the rest of the congregation to know that as well. And if anybody calls you on it, you call me, okay? <laughs> All right, and we'll have a conversation. Well, it is really such a privilege to lead you in this. There is an insert in your program, if you haven't found it yet, and I believe the words may be up on the screen as well. Yes, I'm being told. And so uh, uh, I'd like for you just to remain seated right now. We're going to do a little bit of a responsive uh, reading first, and then I'm going to read a passage of scripture, and then pastor's going to come and share his covenant uh, with you, and, uh, and I'll lead you through the remainder of, of the steps. But uh, as you read these words, uh, I want you to pay attention to what you're saying, okay, and what we're saying together. We're doing this in the presence of, of God. This is the Lord's day. This is the Lord's house. Uh, it's not just us here, but the Lord is here, yeah. and so this is a sacred time. Uh, this is a holy moment as pastor and people are joined together for service. Let me ask you this question. Would you read what is in the bold lettering? Will you affirm that you believe that this pastor and this church are to be workers together in the providence of God? This we do believe and affirm. Will you support this pastor with respect, loyalty, love, and fervent prayer? This we will do with God's help. Will you receive Pastor Deese and Kendra as members of your own family of faith and love and pray for them as your own? This we will do with God's help. Will you give sacrificially of your means so that this pastor and this church might have adequate resources to fulfill the mission to which God has called them? This we will do with God's help. Will you respond to pastoral leadership by vigorous participation in the congregational life of this church as it carries out its fourfold ministry of worship, evangelism, nurture, and service in developing fully devoted followers of Christ. Yes, we will do with God's help. If you're able and would like to, would you join me in standing as we read the word of the Lord this morning from <coughs> Ephesians chapter 4. beginning with verse 7 and then jumping down to verse 11. But to each one of us, grace has been given. Aren't you glad for that? Yeah. Yeah. As Christ apportioned it. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, yeah. we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. And from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may yeah. be seated. Pastor. 
In response to the gracious call of God and in gratitude for the confidence you have expressed in me, I begin my service to you as pastor. I pledge to you a stewardship of the church's resources and covenant with you to make ours a living, efficient church. A church in which sermon and sacrament are based strongly on the word and enlivened with the dynamic presence of the Holy Spirit. A church that continually has cause to rejoice because of God's transforming grace at work in our midst. A church where the tempted are strengthened with victory. A church where the redeemed are enabled to see their larger need of Christ in cleansing fullness. A church where the particular consolations of God are given to the afflicted. A church where Christian men and women begin, even on earth, to be an authentic Christian community. A church that constantly bears toward the whole world with sacrifice in her heart and confidence in her purpose. I pledge you a stewardship of my responsibilities as pastor, to live before you with integrity and Christian simplicity, to responsibly administer the affairs of the church in consultation and cooperation with the church board, the church staff, and the people of the congregation as we carry out the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ, to lead you in worship as a worshiping leader, developing a careful regimen of study, prayer, reflection, and preparation for the purposes of personal growth and ministry, to encourage you, comfort you, instruct and challenge you by the preaching of the word and the administration of the sacraments, to seek always and in all appropriate ways to expand the borders of the kingdom of God, cooperating with the district and general church of the Nazarene and fulfilling a worldwide agenda, to live my spousal role responsibly, giving to Kendra the care and love due her as a gift of God to me. To listen carefully to you, care deeply for you, work closely with you, and pray daily for you, that we may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, to be a servant leader after the example of Christ. Amen. These are your pastor's commitments to you. And Kendra, there was one in there for you as well. All right? You've got a record. So, Pastor, having committed yourself to this work, I charge you to care alike for the young and the old, the strong and the weak, the rich and the poor. By your words and by your life, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. To the congregation, I say, through the visionary leadership of your board, you have willingly and prayerfully called Pastor Deese to work among you. You've asked him to come and serve with you. I charge you now to willingly and prayerfully support, cooperate, and work together with him in the name of Jesus Christ, whom we all serve. Can you stand again with me one more time? On the back panel are words we'll all read together. We shall strive to cooperatively create and sustain an effective ministry that will renew and strengthen each member of this community of faith. We shall actively seek and welcome into membership all persons without regard to their economic or social status, race or nationality. We shall accept our responsibility for moral and spiritual development in our community, living by Christian standards of good citizenship. We shall work together with other churches and denominations in our community for the advancement of Christ's kingdom whenever we have the opportunity to do so. We shall periodically evaluate our church's fellowship and ministry in light of our mission. If problems present barriers to the mutual effectiveness of pastor and congregation, we shall cooperatively pray, faithfully communicate, and work in love to find solutions in the spirit of Christian understanding. We shall work to ensure that the church appropriately relates itself to the mission, institutions, and doctrines of the Church of the Nazarene and the redemptive mission of Christ in our community 
nation, and the world. world. Amen. Amen. Do you believe the words you've just read? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If you have, then by the power invested in me, by the as superintendent of the Southern Florida District of the Church of the Nazarene, I announce to you that having committed themselves to mutual covenants, Pastor Deese and Avon Park Church of the Nazarene have entered a new and solemn relationship that of pastor and people. And instead of saying, you may now kiss the bride, <laughs> would you please greet your new pastor and wife? Sure. Remain standing with me. Let's pray. Can we pray over our pastor and yes. his family? Father God, we are so grateful this morning. We celebrate uh, the way you work in your church. Uh, Lord, from that first day that I met with the board and we talked about the vision that you placed on their heart for this congregation, what they felt like they needed in their next pastor to take them into the, the new chapter for Avon Park Church of the Nazarene. Uh, we sensed in that, in that meeting, in that hall right next door, that you were present with us and that indeed your Holy Spirit was guiding. And through the process, uh, the process uh, in which uh, Dr. Fairbanks helped us and bathed in prayer and committed to following and finding the mind of Christ, that you have led us deliberately, consistently to this moment. Thank you for uh, leading the board to consensus to recommend Pastor Michael Deese as the next pastor of Avon Park. Thank you for leading this congregation by responding in such a strong and positive vote to say, yes, we believe this is God's leading for us. Thank you for helping Pastor Michael and Kendra on their knees find the affirmation that, yes, this indeed is God's will for us as well. And so we have made covenants to one another this morning. We've recognized you as sovereign, as Lord of the church. We recognize the purpose and the mission of the Church of Jesus Christ, and we have committed ourselves to work together in furthering that mission in this community and beyond with the biblical message of Christian holiness. Now I pray, Lord, that your hand of blessing would rest upon Pastor Michael and upon Kendra and upon their family. I pray, Lord, that every week they would sense that affirmation. We are exactly where God asked us to be. And as we're being obedient, he is going to use our efforts and our energies and our strength and our obedience to further his cause. May, uh, may those days in which doubts arise uh, quickly be replaced, Lord, by the hope and the trust and the confidence that we find in you. May the, uh, may the comments of congregation always be encouraging and, and positive. Pastor, we're with you. We believe in you. Thank you for the good word today. Pastor, thank you for praying for us and for shepherding us with such a gentle heart. I pray, Lord, that this union of pastor and people would be one that uh, the community around would look on and say, boy, I'd like to be a part of a church like that where they love one another and they love their pastor. And so I pray, Lord, that you would be lifted up in the relationship that is being established today and that as a result of the faithful obedience of your people, Many will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and experience the sanctifying power of yes. his Holy Spirit yes. as this church continues to obediently carry out its mission in this place. We give you thanks, Lord, and it's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Congratulate your pastor one more time.